In this episode, we're going to talk about problems. Um, problems come in several basic flavors. You have errors, which are syntax boost oopsies, uh, typos, undefined variables or functions, variable type mismatches, something unexpected happened during execution of the program, we ran out of memory, etc. Like it's something that crashes the system or does not allow it to uh, be compiled at all. The next, the next kind of problem is, is unexpected behaviors. So these are things um, that are whack but are not stopping the program. So like what's going on? Uh, how do we follow the evidence to the culprit of the wackiness? So that's a kind of a next level uh, problem. It requires a little bit of sleuthing to, to figure out and thinking about what it is you've just done. You know, there's, there's methods for, for dealing with, with this. We'll get to that. The next problem is I have no idea how to implement or keep track of this behavior. Uh, so, you know, planning and implementing program architecture, subdividing the problem into smaller problems as tasks for the computer to execute in order. Um, so these are skills, like programming skills that you need to kind of build up. And then the last kind of problem category is I have no idea what code I wrote last week does. Um, and that one has the simplest solution, and that's leave comments. You leave comments to explain to your future self what it is you did in a place, uh, and you also leave comments to um, store things away for later. Let's load some errors. Unsafe changes. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. So we're we're talking about we're talking about comments and stuff. Here's a um, a way to do multi-line comments. Um, so we have two tabs here of code. We have a working version tab and a broken version tab. And currently, the broken version tab is on, and the working version tab is off and so you will notice the multi-line comment has these like square brackets minus minus square brackets and then minus minus closing square brackets and everything in between those two is going to be commented out and then i'm going to break the comment so now it's no longer a multi-line comment and this last line is a, just a single line uh, comment it'll just sit there waiting for me to figure my stuff out anyway um Let's show you this little program. So there we go. I've commented out the broken version by closing this little space and I've turned on the working version by breaking it open. So save this. Let's run it. So this is what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be kind of bouncing um, on a pink and blue field and when you hold down X, it'll kind of like be confused at first and then pick a sort of like uh, horizontal component to its oscillation, right? So like normally it just oscillates up and down and when you hold down X, it will oscillate um, left and right as well. So if you let go, it goes back to the center of the screen, if you press it again, you kind of have a moment of figuring out different oscillations and then it will settle on a oscillation that basically fills this uh, rectangle. And that rectangle is randomly generated every time and slightly different. I'm using a bunch of uh, functions that we haven't really like talked about. Um, and that's okay, because like it doesn't really matter how I'm doing this. We're going to talk about different errors that are breaking this thing up. Um, so if you press Z or like the circle button, whatever, um, It'll randomly generate a new pattern for the for the background. And so anytime you hold it, it'll just randomly generate stuff and you let go, it'll just leave it at that. Um, so that's like the correct functionality of this file. And so let's uh let's see what will happen once we comment out the working version and turn on the broken version, right? Let's save this guy and let's run it. All right, so here we go. We have a twofer right 
out of the gate. So syntax error line seven, tab one, syntax error near update, uh, runtime error, attempt to call a string value. All right, so we're just like doing a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of stuff in there. So when you hit escape from that, from that error, um, it'll drop you to the actual line that it thinks the problem happened. So um, what, what can we do here? What do we see here? We see a syntax error. So let's solve the syntax error first. It's somewhere on this line. Usually the syntax error are easy to find because it'll tell you where the error is. There's one type of syntax error that lies and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but so let's, what's, what's wrong here? So the first, the first thing, like I know, I, I know what's wrong. Uh, this is not function, it's a function and it's not pink. See over here, function turns pink, draw, it's all, all cool. Um, let's, uh, let's fix that. So I'll add a function, it has to be a fun function. You know, it's not a function without fun. So yay, we fixed it. Let's, uh, let's run this. All right, so now we have a new syntax error. It says unclosed function at line seven. All right, so now it thinks that this function is not closed. Now, it's only its best guess that this function is the culprit here. I wonder where that end needs to go. So maybe, maybe let's just say that we messed up over here and it's just this whole function needs an end at the end. So I'm gonna give it an end at the end. And so let's see what happens now. Now, nothing happens. We have nothing going on. All right, so we have fixed the syntax error that we had and we have fixed the other error we've had, like it went away. Um, but this function is, is messing with us in like, what is going on there? Like it's not, it's not playing anything. Um, but it's not erroring out. So like, what gives bro? So, so here's, here's my take. Um, we have misspelled update. Um, update is the, um, is the name of the function. So let me just go, like, go find it over here. Where's my cheat sheet? There it is. Whoop. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Program structure update, updat. So update. Um, it didn't change the color because uh, update is the name of the function and we are defining it. Um, we're not using a special built-in function like this one or this one or this one or this one. Um, we, we're just defining it. It just happens to be a special function that, that the program needs to run. So let's run it. Okay, so now if I press X, it'll move, and then it died. All right, it worked for a little while, and then it crashed with a runtime error on line nine, tab one. If oops is bigger than zero, then attempt to compare number with string. So this is uh, this with a string. Um, so oops became a string at some point. Uh, in update line nine, tab one, at line zero, tab zero. All right, so uh, in update line nine. So here is where we are trying to compare this oops to zero. But how, at what point does oops become a string, right? So if you remember from, from our types conversation, a string is just a, like a bit of text with quotes around it. Ah, here we go. There's a, there's a culprit. We've accidentally put um, strings around this number. Uh, and that is not right because we need this number. There's actually functions um, that would, like to number, that would uh, help you convert a, a string if you happen to have like a string that you want to parse as a number. Um, that you can use, but that's not what's going on because um, I don't need to do that. That's, that's silly. I just made a mistake and put this guy in quotes. Uh, you can also like forget quotes. So let's see what that 
looks like. All right, so here we are again. It's still not working. Still doing the same thing, but at least it's not crashing. All right, so what is this? This is not the behavior that we wanted to have from the beginning. It seems like it's just going whichever way and stopping. All right, so it's like not oscillating at all. So what has happened? Well, we're going to have to rewind a little bit. Um, when we fix this, this syntax error of like missing uh, function ending, um, I, I, I just randomly, you know, decided to trust the interpreter and find exactly where, you know, this function is supposed to be closed and just put in closing mark there. But turns out there's a bunch of if and uh, if else and then uh, whatever's uh, going on inside of this function. And so maybe it's one of those that lost its its end tag. Um, and the interpreter is just like not sure which one of these things inside here are missing the closing end tag. So whenever you hear like missing end tag, uh, you kind of have to go back and like format your functions to make sure that like everything is indented as it should be. Like, I don't know, maybe here's something wacky. Like we have an else and then an end and they're indented the same, right? But then we have an if, an else if statement inside of it. And it, at first sight, it looks like it does not have an end, but actually the end is parked over here. So this if then this else if this then this and then end so this if statement is closed right here so we know that this is complete um, this if statement happens here and ends here so we know that this one is kind of complete this one happens outside of that conditional statement I'll, I'll i'll make it easy for you it's actually over here where i removed that end um, and this is causing the oscillation and all of that stuff to just not happen. Because with this end missing, like, this else kicks in. So even though this if button is pressed, then do this code, else do this code, becomes if this button is pressed, then if oops is bigger than zero, do all of this. If oops is less than or whatever zero so like this else is kind of like jumped and is kind of like competing with with this code over here it's kind of like fallen into the into the container deeper than it's supposed to be because this end here is missing and everything else that follows um is 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 also like 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 messed up because of that that cascade of, of ends. So like like this end here will finish this bit and this end will finish this end will close this if, right? And so that's the mistake that's happening that this end closes this if and then everything else would fall inside of the end the way we had it when we first quote unquote fixed this error, right? So we 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 have to kind of like this is where having like like really consistent um, indentations will help you um, figure out where stuff is and where you've made mistakes. But you know, sometimes you will want to put things in one row because it just kind of like makes sense and it's cleaner that way because we only have one line of code that we are running if this value is less than zero. And so I wrote it all in two lines of code, if bigger than zero, if less than zero. So it's up to you to figure out what kind of code cleanliness means. Um, but there's some things that, that, that you could kind of like keep in mind. So like if you start an if um, or any kind of like a, like a block level element, you want to indent the next lines, all of the lines that are inside of that code need to be indented. And then the traditional way is to drop this closing um, like, like bit 
to the line below so that it is in line with the if. So that at a glance you can kind of tell that this if is closed here. That this if has an else and is closed here. You know? And this if closes here. So if you have like multiple levels of conditionals and loops and things all like nested inside, um, at least you can give yourself a hint as to what's going on by, by, by having this indentation doing its thing. So have we fixed it? If we move that X? Yes, we fixed it. Looks right. Oh, the other button doesn't work. We're no longer changing the, the pattern on the background. Like I'm pressing the other button, it's not doing. All right, so let's investigate. So where does that live? Ah, okay, so here's another one. If button is this one, so yeah, that's the other button, then pattern is this random binary number, um, and then uh, the, the fill pattern is the pattern, and then we fill, fill a rectangle, fill the whole screen. Um, but why is this not working? It looks like it's working. The code looks legit. Let's compare it to the previous button that we had over here. So what's different? Well, if button X, if button O. Um, well, this button here is in quotes and this one is not. What does that mean? How do we interpret this? Like, isn't this like a special character, an emoji, basically? Like, you, you make it by pressing Shift X. Um, like, what's going on? Well, this is actually a variable that is available to you and is like loaded at the beginning of everything by um, Pico8. Uh, and you can, re you can change it to be something else. So I could say, you know, this is equal to 4 um, or 5 or whatever, some number, um, and now that is the value of, of that number. It's just, just a variable name. It just so happens that, uh, let's see, let's test this out. Uh, print, and then I'm gonna say x, uh, all right, that's a value of the x coordinate, what? Five. So yeah, uh, the first x that I printed was this x, <laughs> accidentally. Um, and then I printed the button X, which is actually turns out is the value of 5. And what happens if I print the string of this key? It prints that emoji, right? So um, the difference here is that when you put it in quotes, it's the, 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 the text itself. And when you don't put it in quotes, it's a variable name. And here, um, it's actually the variable that we want. It's not the text value. And the only way to know which is which is to go over here to the, the Pico8 documentation and look up the button. Um, where is it? Button. Uh, get the button for state player, blah, blah, blah. Instead of using number for, for B, it's also possible to use a button glyph. In the uh, coded editor, use shift L, R, U, D, O, or X. Um, and these correspond to these characters, right? So, what do you say? Left, right, up, down. Uh, be on the lookout for, 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 for loose quote applications. So now, having replaced this, do we have the, yep, it's randomizing the background. The bottom line with errors is don't let errors freak you out. Read the error message. It'll tell you what kind of error it is. Syntax errors are easier to catch. The program will report these kinds of errors when it runs. Syntax, broadly speaking, refers to the rules for ordering sentences in a language. When your debugger tells you about syntax errors, it means that you may have forgotten or misspelled an important word in a multi-part expression. For example, while, do, and, or for, in, do, and, or you're missing key parentheses, or quotes, or semicolons, or commas, or you have operators in an unexpected place. Operators are plus, minus, equal, times, divided, modulus, and, or, is equal to, is greater than, is less than, etc. 
The interpreter will usually tell you exactly where the error is, and it is generally correct. Look at the color of the word that you're typing. Is it the correct color? If you're missing an N to close a block, usually the row it is telling you to check is wrong. That is the code interpreter's best guess as to which bit the unclosed end belongs to, but it could as well belong to any of the children blocks of that block. The other kind of error is the runtime error. Uh, runtime errors usually happen while the program is running. So it's not a syntax error, it's not like the thing that you gave the computer is is not ready for the computer to really understand. It's more that like everything looks fine at first sight, but like some piece of grit fell into the machine. Um, so like a function or a table are being mishandled somehow at the point of execution. Um, probably a typo in a variable or a function name. So double check your spelling. Maybe you lost some variables definition or you just plain forgot to define a thing. Um, so like look where you're, you're, you're starting your, your functions and what they are at the beginning. And maybe you're, you're using the same function name in another place and you don't know that the two are, are messing with one another. You can only define a function once and run it as many times as you want. If you define it twice, you are overwriting the first one with the second one. You can define a function inside of another function, or rather like you, you can, but it's probably not what you want to be doing right now. Um, you need to know what you're doing and have a grasp of object-oriented programming, which is just like a way of organizing your data and behaviors uh, to successfully and for right reasons define a function inside of another function. Count the parameters that your functions are asking for. Maybe there are too many or too few or they're in wrong order. So, so much for errors. The other kinds of problems where unexpected behaviors are, are happening but are not technically crashing anything um, are more difficult to, to wrap your mind around and uh, can only be squelched with patience and reflection and they can only be made worse with their opposites. So like typing random stuff is not going to help. So this brings us to superstitious programming. Um, it is, it is easy to fall into superstitious patterns of typing random parameters into functions because of some fuzzy misunderstandings of the meaningful parts of the syntax. So always double check the documentation if you're suspicious about how you're using some function. Just because it feels like patterns uh, of parameters or functions in one corner of a thing is meaningful doesn't mean in another context doing the same thing would do anything helpful. So for example, empty space and line breaks between things, uh, they're, you know, up to the programmer. Uh, cleaning up what white space will help you see things more clearly, but mimicking white space from some other context is unlikely to solve a code problem. Unless you're like, your white space is, is put two variable names together and the computer thinks it's one or something silly like that. Just because sending some numbers to a function might seem to you to be a way of doing something logically, it doesn't mean that it is. So just because it is a function and some functions take parameters, Passing a meaningless parameter to a function is like superstitious programming. So, for example, time doesn't take any parameters. So, passing any kind of number to time is not going to do anything special. Uh, it won't cause an error in Lua, but, that's, but it's not doing anything. And I cannot overstate this enough. Consult the documentation. 60% of questions you ask me can be answered by looking up what a given function on the cheat sheet means. The documentation is not lying to you and it will not mislead you. If the words in the documentation don't make sense, try the, the, the Hive's own glossary. There's no point in using really big numbers. There's only so many numbers Pico 8 will understand before the number flips to negative maximum possible. If something's really not working or behaving way weirder than you understand, usually adding more and more lines of code is not the way to fix things. You're just adding more noise into the cacophony. Try taking things out or turning off sections until you find the off-key culprit. 
it helps to print values on the screen to make sure you understand what they are at any given point in the in the time in the execution of your program um, you can also use print to print things to a text document on your desktop that's another good way of, of testing things um, um, you can use stop and resume to catch errors I covered that in one of the previous videos um, Another thing you can do is talk to the rubber ducky. Like, us instructors are here to help you figure this stuff out. If we're not available, and no sibling or, or parent is available to be there and, and listen to your problem, you can try explaining your problem to a rubber ducky or another inanimate object. You can, like, just walk the inanimate object through what you're trying to do, explaining what each each line around the troublesome section is supposed to be doing, and maybe you will notice what's what's wrong. Uh, if that doesn't work, uh, take a break, go for a walk, um, or you know, find me.